Well, good evening. I would like to give you a very warm welcome to our watch night service. My name is Jack McDonald and I am a student minister here at Dunfermline East. I think for many of us, it has been quite the run up to Christmas, but hopefully you have managed to get everything done that you need to by now. Hopefully you've managed to do all the Christmas shopping that you need to. You've wrapped your presents, you've bought the food, you have decorated the house and you have put the kids to bed if you have them. You've done all the things that are important to you before Christmas. And if you haven't, well, it's too late now. So you might as well sit back, relax and enjoy the moment. During the service, we have some readings and some reflections, as well as some carols. And it may be that you want to, to sing along with them or simply to reflect on the words. And of course, this year we're not able to meet in our building, but we are still coming together nonetheless knowing that God is with us through his spirit. Our hope is that this service will be a quiet half an hour to pause between the, the fran franticness of what has gone before in preparing for Christmas and all that will come tomorrow in the busyness of Christmas Day itself. And here there will be time to focus on, on what Christmas is about in the coming of Christ and worshipping him. Let's, let's begin our service by coming before God in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the, the darkness of winter and in the darkness of our broken world, the light of Christ shines to give us courage and hope. And we ask that you would light up our hearts as we praise you and you would light up our minds as we hear from your word that by your spirit, you would offer us peace and joy and the knowledge of your presence in our lives. Forgive us when we doubt your ability to bring change and to transform lives. Forgive us when we are slow to play our part in the work of showing and sharing your love. Forgive us when we allow our problems to cloud out your possibilities. Thank you that at Christmas we celebrate the fact that you came down from heaven to meet with us and we ask that you would meet with us now in our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Matthew 1, 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant to the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. One to twenty, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. In about 15 minutes time, it's going to be Christmas Day. And Christmas is known as a time of joy and of celebration and of thanksgiving. And I just want to spend a few minutes just now thinking about what joy and happiness mean at Christmas. Where do we get our Christmas joy from? What makes Christmas special? Is it the presents? Is it the friends and the family? Is it the, the time off? Is it the bad films that are on TV? And what I want to think about this evening is a, is a phrase that, that pops up in the, in the Christmas story and it's perhaps not given as much, as much thought as it deserves. We've thought about it a little bit uh, over the past few weeks at Dunfermline East, but the more that I think about it, the more important and the more special this phrase is. The phrase is Emmanuel, God with us. It's one of the names that was given to Jesus at his birth. And it would be very easy in amongst all the, the hustle and the bustle and the busyness of Christmas to lose sight of what these four small words actually mean. So why is God with us important? Why does this name matter? I want you to, to pause for a moment and to picture God in your mind. What do you think of when I say the name God to you? For many people, um, I imagine they think of God as, as being in heaven, as being far away, perhaps being passive, not doing very much. Often he's imagined on a, on a throne. Perhaps he's waiting to judge. Perhaps he's, he's even waiting to punish. Or perhaps for you, God is, is the big bearded guy in the sky, just like the, the painting on the roof of the Sistine Chapel. Either way, he, he's not thought of as being a figure that is, that is easy to relate to. He's certainly not a person that you'd expect much sympathy or compassion from. And, and there is an element of truth in that image of God. Like, like most convincing lies, it's, it's based on a half-truth. Christians, um, Christians believe in a God who is, who is all-powerful, who is unchanging, who is, who is completely different from humanity in, in so many ways. The book of First Samuel tells us that he who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a human being that he should change his mind. And in a, in a world that is constantly changing, and when we often feel completely powerless and insignificant, there can be great comfort in those verses and that understanding of God. Indeed, for, for hundreds of years, that is the part of God's character that we have, have focused on. But I think for me, if that was the only aspect of the Christian God that we knew, I would, I would really struggle. How can, how can a loving God be far off, be unchanging when he sees suffering? How can he not be moved by the problems that he sees in humanity? And importantly, why doesn't he do something about it? And for me, it's this, this little phrase that comes up in the Christmas story, Emmanuel that becomes important. Here we begin to something, see something of, of real significance, something that has the possibility to, to change our lives. Emmanuel, in God with us, it reminds us that at Christmas, God came down and he took on human flesh. He became part of us. He took on what it is to be human and all the, and all the hardship and all the challenges that that involves. The book of Isaiah tells us that 
He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. You see, after, after Christmas, we can no longer think of God as being far off, indifferently looking down on us and our struggles. Instead, we have a God that, that left perfection, that entered into our messy, struggling humanity. And when God came down, he didn't come to the most cushy, comfortable of existences. It is quite the opposite. Jesus' family, they, they weren't well off materially. In fact, the Bible tells us that he was born into a stable. That as he performed his ministry and travelled around, he had nowhere to lay his head. And that when the bills came through, when he had to, to pay, that he didn't even have enough money to pay the temple tax. You see, in a world where over 10% of the world's population live on less than pound sixty a day, and one in eight people go to bed hungry every night, the name Emmanuel tells us that we have a God who knows what that means and has experienced poverty himself. Jesus, Jesus knew what it was to grieve as well. One of, his, one of his best friends, Lazarus, died, and we read about Jesus just weeping. And so as people struggle with, with, with grief and with loss, and as, and as loneliness sets in, that, that little phrase on the Christmas card, Emmanuel, it tells us that we have a God that knows what it is to lose someone you love. He too has experienced grief. Or when we are, when we're tempted to do the things that we shouldn't do, or, or to not do the good that we know that we should. We know that Christ was tempted too. He was tempted in the desert and he was, he was tempted in the garden. Jesus also knew what it was like to be abandoned by people. Jesus was rejected by his family um, who, just, who just didn't believe, who just didn't understand what he was doing and they, and they tried to stop him. His friends left him when things got tough and they even betrayed him. Jesus, Emmanuel, he knows the struggle of friends and family letting you down and the tensions that come when loved ones just don't understand. In a country where where 11% of adults often feel lonely, we have a God who understands. And then we come to the, to the last days of Jesus' life. Jesus received no justice when he was arrested. He was hauled before a kangaroo Jewish court and he was convicted by a Roman court, even though Pilate, the judge, knew that he was innocent. And ultimately, he was, he was killed. God, the judge of all, through Emmanuel, knows what it is to face injustice. In a world where so many face injustices of, of so many different sorts, we have a God who understands. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, he has experienced the, the very worst of what it is to be human. He knows it all. So that when we go through tough times of life, we turn to God and we do not turn to a God who is far off and who is distant, but we, have a turn, we turn to a God who has, who has been through it as well, who knows, who understands, who gets it. But fortunately, Emmanuel means even more than just a God we can relate to, a God who suffers as much as we do. There's much more to it than that. Emmanuel's, Emmanuel's also the promise of a bridge between two existences. A bridge from, from suffering and struggling in the world to, to stability, to peace, to the happiness of life with God, the one who made us and who wants the best for us. The wonderful thing about the Christmas story is there are people in it who, who really got this and it made such a difference to their lives regardless, even despite the circumstances that they were in. So, um, so Mary, while, while visiting her cousin, despite all the uncertainty and all the fear that just must have been going through her head, she was so happy about Jesus coming into the world that she bursts into spontaneous song and displays a, a strength and a courage that is just hard to comprehend. 
the wise men, rulers and kings from far away. They find the place where Jesus was born. And it's not Jerusalem where the palace was, but it's a barn in a backwater town. And yet, after traveling all that distance, they are so overjoyed at this baby that they could hardly contain themselves. The, the shepherds, these are hard men who were out with society. They were on the margins. They were isolated. They had really rough jobs. And they come and they see this baby Jesus and they worship and they praise God. And they went about telling everyone and anyone who would listen the good news about him being born. What, um, what God gave these people was not the joy of gifts or presents. It wasn't the joy of having family and friends around them. It wasn't, um, it wasn't even the contentment of a belly full of turkey. It was a contentment that went much, much deeper. It was the joy of knowing that God was with them. That God cared enough about them to come and to meet them where they were. He took the first step. And the refrain from these passages over and again is, do not be afraid. This, um, this Christmas might not be what you expected. But the first Christmas wasn't what Mary expected either. It wasn't what the, the wise men expected. It wasn't what the shepherds expected. The only one who knew what to expect that first Christmas was God. And yet, he brought, brought lasting peace and joy to Mary. He brought lasting peace and joy to the shepherds and lasting peace and joy to the wise men that none of them expected. I pray that whatever tomorrow holds for you, that you too will know that lasting joy, that deep peace that comes from knowing Emmanuel, the God that has left heaven to meet with you. Heaven has come to us, take two.
Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all that you have shown us in Jesus. Now we know that you are not far away. And we thank you that though we cannot see you, you have promised that no matter who or what we are, no matter what we have done or failed to do, you will be very near to each one of us. This Christmas, help us to remember the coming of Jesus. We praise you for the, the joy of his living presence in our lives. We praise you that he came into this world just as we did, as a helpless baby. We thank you that his coming has left us in no doubt about your love and your mercy. We praise you, Father, that you have opened the way to real life, both now and for all eternity. We praise you, Father, for the story of Mary and Joseph, for the shepherds and the angels and the wise men and the star. We praise you for the carols that we sing and for the joy that we share in celebrating the arrival of Jesus. And we praise you that it is not just a story, but a message about the birth of the Saviour of the world. Father, forgive us if we spend so much time preparing to enjoy ourselves that we forget those who have no joy this Christmas. Forgive us as we decorate our homes if we forget those who have no home. Forgive us as we welcome the baby in the manger, Lord, if we forget he was also the man on the cross. Fill us anew with your hope, your hope that comes from knowing God with us, and help us this Christmas to spread that hope with all around us. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, we pray. Amen.
uh, this evening we have a special treat. And Melissa, who used to worship with us here at Fernland East and now lives in London, is going to sing a piece for us now. Well, that is Christmas Day, so let me wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, and it's been wonderful to be with you. Now, look forward in hope to the coming of your Saviour. Prepare the way for Christ your Lord. Welcome him with love and faith when he comes in glory. And may the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to you and all people this Christmas Day and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's finish by singing that favourite Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful.